Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime? while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours and from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to tell them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God has blessed me in many ways in my life. One of the blessings he's given me is I sleep pretty good. You don't have trouble falling asleep, and I'm a deep sleeper. I slept through the last earthquake and a deep sleeper. Uh, the downside of that, though, is I don't hardly ever remember my dreams. Anybody else have that thing where you know you dream, but you just you can never remember? Well, the other night, though, I had a dream that I vividly remember. Um, I dreamed that I had died and gone to heaven. And I was in the waiting room. <laughs> and the weirdest thing, uh, you know, it goes for miles and miles, and the walls are just covered with clocks. Of all things, clocks. And they're all on different times. Uh, most of them uh, were between 12 and 1 o'clock, but there were some at 3.30 and 7 and 9, 10 o'clock. And it was the weirdest thing, and I couldn't figure out what it was for, so I, there was an angel flying by, so I grabbed him and asked him to explain it. And he says, well, every person gets their own clock. And because we have so many people to keep track of, we just need a system where we can see how people are doing spiritually just by glancing. At it, so we figured out clocks were the easiest way to do that because the way we set it up is everybody has their own clock, and then if they ever commit a sin, the clock just ticks forward just a little bit. So we can instantly tell how they're doing. Well, that's an interesting system. And so I had a lot of time on my hands, so I started looking around at other people's clocks. <laughs> You know, I remember Patty Outwater and Tina's. They were like 12, 12.03. I'm looking around, I'm starting to think of people I know, and uh, eventually I got to Father Mike. I wanted to see what his clock was. <laughs> and I went over to the J section, and he wasn't there. 
and my heart sank. <laughs> Because I didn't know what that meant. I, I didn't know if his clock wasn't there, if that meant he had also died but gone elsewhere. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant, but I was I remember being very sad about that. So I flagged down another angel and, and said, what happened to Father Mike's clock? And the angel said, oh, uh, now that's here. We, we had to put it in the office. Uh, we use it for a fan. <laughs> I really apologize. <clears throat> the readings today are quite clear about the rich man, Devi's, uh, as we traditionally call him, even though that's not the name he gets in the scriptures, the Latin name for it just means rich man. Uh, a couple things about that story we just heard that are uh, good to know. It talks about how he was dressed in purple. Well, what's the big deal about that? Well, purple in the ancient world there was the hardest color, therefore the most expensive color, the hardest color to dye things with. So only the very, very wealthy and the royalty ever had purple garments, and that's why when it was time to crucify Jesus, they mocked him by putting a purple robe on him. The other important thing in, in the gospel it talks about is that Lazarus, the poor beggar, the cripple, at the gates of the house of the rich man, uh, wanted to eat the scraps. Now, what they meant by that was, think about this, back then, they didn't have forks and knives. People ate with their hands. And they also didn't have one of our modern conveniences, uh, napkins. So, what did they do besides? You know? Well, uh, this works for some food, but if you get grease on your hands, uh, they have little water dishes at, at the table. The water doesn't remove greasy things, right? So what they would do is they would take bread, which was cheap and plentiful, and to clean your hands, you'd just grab a chunk of bread and squish it in your hands to get all the uh, <clears throat> oily stuff off it. And they, that's what they went by the scraps, this soiled with food and grease bread. And that's what Lazarus was living on. That's how poor he was. So the gospel talks about the sumptuousness of the meals and the lifestyle of the rich man <clears throat> and compared to the misery of Lazarus, the poor man. And when they both die, the poor man is carried off to heaven and the rich man is sent to the depths of hell. And clearly the reason for one and the other is that it's not that there was any fault with uh, Devi's being rich, and nothing wrong with that. It's not what he did. He, there's no mention of him being mean or nasty towards Lazarus or anything like that. In fact, he probably just let him out of those scraps. <clears throat> but the point of the gospel is he did nothing else to help Lazarus. And that is the clear message. In the Old Testament times, you were required by law to help the poor. You had to tithe a certain percentage of your income. If you had grew things, grew crops on land, it was against the law for you to harvest the corners of your property. You could only harvest the center of it. The corners you had to leave alone with the idea that the poor would be able to go and pick fruit or gather wheat from the corners. Uh, but Jesus was trying to make the point, no, you've got to do a lot more than what the law requires. You, you have to go out of your way to help those less fortunate than you are. That's a rather clear, pointed message, heaven versus hell kind of message that we get in the gospel today, as well as the first and second readings that uh, entrance uh, admission requirements for heaven include helping the less fortunate. And the other part of what's in the gospel today is the rich man, while he's in hell, asks God or asks Abraham to send down Lazarus to go talk to his brothers and warn them that they better change their ways. 
And Abraham says, well, they have Moses and the prophets to tell them. And the rich man says, well, yeah, but they're not listening. They need, you know, magic. They need a ghost to appear and tell them to change their life. <clears throat> and Abraham says, no, no magic. Right? If there is magic, if there was um, a way that God could force us to believe in him, force us to follow his ways through the appearance of ghosts or something that makes uh, him absolutely undeniable, well, that would be magic, and that would remove, actually, free will. Our faith, our choice to follow God is just that, the choice. Love is a decision, and for God to take that away from us would make us just puppets, and God doesn't want to make us puppets. He gives us the ability to love him or reject him. He gives us the, the ability to choose to believe or not to believe. And he's not promising any magic. Other than the birth of babies or sunrises <coughs> um, or SC finally winning a ball game. <laughs> There are other ways we have to know and see God in the world, and he's not going to take our away our ability to choose by performing magic. So the simple reflection for us today is simply, uh, no matter how bad off we are, there's always people less fortunate. And whether we help them with money, or we help them with time and energy, uh, clearly the obligation, if we are truly to be followers of Jesus, is to do something something concrete, something that actually changes the lives of those who have even less than we do. That is our challenge today through the gospel, through the reading, that we should reflect on this week. And we start that by standing and professing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father.